Hi Jason Taco. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I also want to thank all those who subscribe to my channel. If you haven't yet subscribed, I encourage you to do so. It's completely free and you won't miss any upcoming episodes and it really helps me to continue making these videos. Today's painting demonstration is going to be a little bit longer. It's a painting of a Blackfeet warrior sitting down in front of his lodge. It's a fairly complex painting, but I encourage you to watch the entire video, maybe in a couple sessions, because it is almost an hour. But you'll get really in-depth in the painting process and see how I change things, how I make adjustments, and hopefully this will help you in your painting process. So you hope that you enjoy this video. If you do, hit the like button below. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done so, and let's get started. Okay, what I'm doing is I've taken my drawing that I scanned in Photoshop, I printed it out on 8.5 by 11 inch sheets, I taped them together because that's all the bigger that my printer will go, and I'm applying um, vine charcoal, a very soft charcoal, onto the reverse side of that printout. You can see here I'm going to lay down this printout onto my canvas, make sure that I get it positioned correctly, tape it down. Once it's taped down, I start to draw over this with a hard pencil, an H-grade pencil. I'm not trying to get every single detail. My objective is just to get the main proportions. I want to leave um, the de some of those details and things like that for interpreting with paint I don't want a paint by number feel once this is completed okay you can see that um, I got this on the canvas it's on my easel I'm just going back over and darkening some of those lines to make sure that they don't get completely lost This canvas is pretty messy, there's a lot of charcoal on it. I was playing around with the composition quite a bit, moving things around, adding, taking things away. Um, I don't know exactly where this painting is going to go. The focus of the subject is going to be the warrior's face. He has a very dignified, somber look on his face. That's really what I'm after. I also like the compositional flow going from the head down toward the feet and that's why I chose a slightly longer format of 18 by 24 in hindsight maybe I should have went with uh, 16 by 20 but I thought that format was too square so we're gonna see I'm a little concerned about what's gonna happen up here I don't want the, the, that to be just a void but but I don't want anything I put there to take away from the main focal point so I'm being a little risky here I hope I can make this work out We'll see. I think the shield is going to stay. I think that might add a nice element. I'm going to have to de-emphasize that a little bit. Probably going to use some fairly muted colors um, because the um, dress that the warrior is wearing is pretty neutral colors. It's buckskin, so not a lot of bright colors there. So I don't want bright colors over here to compete with that. The bowl up in the front, that adds a little bit of uh, depth, if you will. And I think it kind of had... Um, is a nice lead into the composition but like I said it's a bit of a risk we're gonna see where this painting goes and hopefully it turns out well
Okay, just wanted to take a couple minutes here to talk about where I'm at in this stage of the painting. You can see I have the head pretty much done, and um, overall I'm happy with it. What I had to do though, if you notice, when you look at the reference photo, I, did, I painted the head a little bit darker than what's in the reference photo, especially as it rolls down from that high cheekbone down toward his chin. I made sure I dropped the values just a little bit as I as I as it went down toward his uh, chin and his neck that's done on purpose um, just to emphasize the shape of the head more and that that high cheekbone is closer to the light source if you will and I, I think it has a more powerful effect another thing I did was I exaggerated the values a little bit on the shadow sides of the face the part where the cheek rolls into the nose also on his brow underneath his lips and his chin, those values I made darker than they appear in the photo. A lot of times when um, artists who are not as familiar with painting portraits or the human figure, if you will, what they'll do is they'll make those shadows too light. And those shadows a lot of times can be darker than how they appear in the photograph. So watch out for that if you're painting a human being. Um, another thing that I uh, did is I made some adjustments to the necklace there. I, I kind of had it too straight, um, so I had to uh, scrape some paint off and make adjustments to that. Overall, I'm pretty happy with where it's at. Um, so I, I will probably make some more adjustments as time goes, but I feel I have a nice block in with um, where his head is at right now. One other thing I wanted to mention is the colors I use. I primarily painted his entire head with burnt sienna. I usually use transparent oxide red, but I'm out of that right now. So um, I'm using burnt sienna, yellow ochre, um, some white, and just some touches of cadmium orange, cadmium red. Also, I might dab a little bit into viridian, ultramarine blue, and permanent green, depending on you know how much I want to cool it. If I want to cool it a lot, or neutralize it a lot, I'm probably going to dip into ultramarine blue because that's a much more powerful uh, cool color. It, the tinting strength on that is a lot more powerful than viridian. If I want to slightly cool it and neutralize it, I'm going to dip into the viridian because it's a lot weaker color. It's not going to uh, knock down the warmth nearly as much. Um, same with warming it. If I want to warm it up somewhat more, um, I might add some cat red to it. If I want to warm it up a lot, I'm going to be dipping into that cadmium orange, especially if I want to bring the value up as I warm it up. Um, so that's where we're at right now. Uh, we'll see how this goes and uh, keep watching.